Well, new concerns today as the United Nations is now considering at this moment a global arms treaty that were, would curtail certain gun sales. Right now, the UN is working on a plan that would put a whole new set of international gun rules in place. Supporters, including the Obama administration, argue it will make the world more secure by tamping down on weapons commonly used by gangs and terrorists. But critics fear it would infringe on the Second Amendment right to bear arms right here in the United States. Larry Pratt is the executive director of Gun Owners of America, and KT McFarland is a Fox News national security analyst. Larry, let me start with you on this, because the human rights groups uh, have convinced the Obama administration to sort of reverse what had been U.S. policy when it comes to this proposed treaty uh, and to go into the United Nations and support it because they argue that human rights violations nationwide or uh, worldwide are the result in part of some very bad guys getting their hands on some guns and we need to have more regulation of international gun sales. How does that affect the Second Amendment right here at home? Well, it would completely work against what the Second Amendment is intended to do, but it doesn't seem that the Constitution is much of a, an obstacle or a problem for this administration. But nevertheless, shall not be infringed is something that a treaty can't trump. The, the, the very language in the Constitution dealing with treaty making says that the treaties have to be made under the authority of the United States. And if we the people haven't given authority for gun control to the United States, to the federal government, then its hands are tied. And at a practical level, I think even Harry Reid's Senate would look at that treaty if it's presented to them and say, this is toxic. I'm not going there in an election year. That's, well, I mean, the gun lobby has a lot of power, KT, a lot of power. Uh, I mean, just look at w once the NRA decided to score that holder contempt vote, you had like two dozen Demo Democrats almost immediately come over the other side of the aisle. So they, these lawmakers do pay attention to what the gun lobby wants. It doesn't want this treaty. But why, I still fail to understand exactly how it's going to affect Americans and the Second Amendment as opposed to, because, you know, the, the folks in, who are proposing this want us to believe that this is only an international thing that's going to stop, you know, genocide in other countries because we're going to take away their guns. Look, everybody wants to stop genocide in other countries. That's not the point. Look at how capable has the United Nations been so far at stopping Iran's nuclear weapons program. Iran has agreed to an international Agree an international treaty, but we can't stop Iran. Iran's cheating. It's building a nuclear weapons program. We have no ability to enforce it. We can't even go and inspect what they're doing. So the idea that the United States would cede its national sovereignty to, to an international organization that's going to somehow verify and prevent every country in the world from running guns to other countries, it's just not going to happen. Why? Because the United States will abide by it the same way we abide by the international arms control agreements on the development of nuclear weapons. Who's not going to agree to it is countries like Iran. Is Iran going to really stop gun running to Hamas, to Syria? No. And so you'll be left with a world that's not safer. In fact, it will have the absolute opposite effect of what the intention is. It will make the world a much less safe place. Larry, what do you think is really going on here then, since, uh, since we've had a reversal in terms of, I guess, from the Bush administration to the Obama administration? Why? Is this a political issue, or why would, why would the Obama administration be supporting this? It reflects the, the incredibly strong ideological commitment to control in general, and in guns in particular, of this administration. What they're seeking uh, is not going to be ratified by a Senate, but what I suspect they will try to do, because we've seen it in other areas of federal reigning, uh, governing, is declare uh, that uh, whatever it might be, registration, prohibition of certain calibers of firearms, uh, they'll just try to put that into effect administratively, uh, even though they have no authority, that hasn't stopped them anywhere else where they've wanted to go. KT, the, 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 the UN agree, the treaty, if it, if it is accepted, uh, would hold nations accountable through legally binding rules. Countries that sign it are going to have to pass laws to ensure that, that, that the weapons companies here in, in the United States, for example, abide by this treaty. So what, I mean, could you have American gun manufacturers being cited for noncompliance by the United Nations? I mean, is there a conflict there between the the potential sure. treaty and the Second Amendment. Well, absolutely. You know, United States laws remain supreme in the United States. Our laws are not secondary to international laws, to UN laws. And then you would have a situation where the United Nations is looking at American domestic gun manufacturers and sanctioning them. 
you know, ag again, go back and look at how successful the United Nations has been in any time they've done this sort of thing. The other thing I would say is look at how incompetent the United States has been controlling uh, weapons. I mean, look at Fast and Furious. We couldn't even keep track of those guns. We somehow expect the United Nations is going to keep track of hundreds of thousands, millions of firearms, mm. and assume that there's some enforcement. There's no enforcement an mechanism, point. even if it were a good idea. Larry Pratt, Katie McFarland, thank you both. Thank you.